in crypto, there's this famous saying, banking the unbanked, which means that crypto aims to provide financial services to everyone who doesn't have access to it. But in an ironic turn of events, it's the crypto industry who's now becoming the unbanked. So the US government has been trying to cut off crypto's access to the banking sector. And so far, it looks like they're succeeding, which makes me wonder, are there any banks left that will work with crypto companies? Guys, this is an existential crisis for us. It's not just some regular FUD, because like it or not, we need the banks. They provide our on-ramps and off-ramps after all. And without them, no fresh money can enter the space and you can kiss goodbye your dreams of new all-time highs. That's why I'm quite worried about everything that's been going on and wanted to get to the bottom of it. Now in just a minute, we're gonna go down the list one by one to see if there are any banks left for crypto companies. But first we gotta talk about how we even got here in the first place. Well, our story begins with FTX and people were not lying when they said that Sam Bankman Freed single-handedly set us back like five plus years. After all, he built up so much goodwill and influence in Washington DC and then he rugged them. So the regulators and politicians were pissed off and they had enough so they decided to move against their industry. First, it was Silvergate Bank, one of the preeminent banking partners of the crypto world. They got bombarded with investigations and public pressure from politicians like Elizabeth Warren. The FUD got so bad that companies pulled their deposits in bulk, which eventually forced Silvergate to shut down and liquidate. But you know what's infuriating? Politicians and regulators were all pointing their fingers at crypto, saying that that's what made Silvergate fail. But Silvergate was able to wind down in an orderly manner, no one lost any money, and this was without any bailouts. The same cannot be said for Silicon Valley Bank, Credit Suisse, or other non-crypto banks that needed a bailout. Speaking of Silicon Valley Bank, just a few days after Silvergate shut down, that's when the epic SVB collapse happened. They had a historic bank run fueled by Twitter and they were taken over by the feds on that eventful Friday. Some anti-crypto folks were doing victory laps, going on TV and calling SVB a crypto bank as well. But that was super disingenuous because they really weren't a crypto bank. They served tech startups in Silicon Valley and they got screwed by the rising interest rates. So their failure had nothing to do with crypto. Anyways, that next Sunday, two days after SVB was taken over, the feds also took over Signature Bank in New York. Now that was when the alarm bells rang for the crypto world because after Silvergate, Signature Bank was the second most crypto friendly bank out there. Like Coinbase, Binance, everyone was using them. So when the feds took Signature Bank, it really looked like they were using SVB as cover to carry out their anti-crypto plan. Now, of course, when pressed about this, the feds denied everything and said that they were only doing this to protect depositors. But you know what's crazy? Barney Frank, the former US Senator who's famous for the Dodd-Frank financial reforms, he was on the board of Signature Bank. And he said that it looks like they were targeted for their crypto involvement. Per his analysis, their financial health was fine and they could have continued operating without issue. And this is coming from the OG financial reform guy, by the way. Now, before you say, well, of course he'd say that, he's biased. Just know that he doesn't even particularly like crypto. He said publicly before that he doesn't even think crypto is that useful, but he also doesn't think that it should be unfairly or illegally restricted. Also, if that's not enough for you, here's two more pieces of evidence that Signature Bank was a hit job. First, their eventual sale to another bank did not include the $4 billion worth of crypto deposits, nor did it include their Signet assets either. And second, another bank called First Republic was also struggling like Signature. But guess what? They did not get proactively commandeered by the feds, maybe because they were not a crypto friendly bank. So yeah, that was kind of a smoking gun for the conspiracy theorists out there who were saying that the government was squeezing the crypto industry through something called Operation Chokepoint 2.0. Now, whether that's true or not, one thing is for certain. The feds were able to kill off two of the biggest crypto to fiat payment networks in one week because both Silvergate's SEN and Signature Signet are now dead and gone. So now it's much harder for crypto exchanges and companies to access fiat services. And in terms of infrastructure, we're now back to how things were back in 2017. Anyways, that was a crazy context and now it's time for the fun part. We're going to figure out which banks are left for crypto companies. So people have been crowdsourcing a list of the remaining crypto friendly banks out there 
And this is what they came up with. My first impression is that I haven't heard of any of them before. They're all like mid-tier regional banks, which I guess makes sense given that that's what Silvergate and Signature were. There's also chatter that some of the biggest banks like JP Morgan Chase or BNY Mellon are accepting crypto clients, but that seems to be only for the biggest, most reputable companies like Coinbase, Gemini, or Circle. Speaking of Circle, they've started a new banking relationship with Cross River Bank, so that one seems to be open for business. But if a bank is open to crypto clients, they for sure are being discreet about it. They're not trying to shout from the rooftops that they're working with crypto companies because that would attract unwanted attention from the regulators. So based on all this info, it would seem that there are plenty of banks left for crypto companies and that everyone was just tripping. But you gotta pump the brakes on that line of thought because some banks on that list have come out and said that they have no plans to increase their crypto company exposure. For example, that's exactly what Evolve Bank said when they were asked by a Fox Business reporter. And many of the banks on that list are definitely being selective. Like both Cross River Bank and Customers Bank Corp refused to work with Binance US even though they did accept some other firms. So overall, we can conclude that yes, there are still banks out there for crypto companies, but they are few and far in between. Most of the time you need a special relationship to get an account opened, and even then your features may be limited. Okay, but just how is this all gonna play out in the long haul? Like, is the worst behind us and things are only gonna get better now? Or will the Fed succeed in choking out crypto? Well, I pulled out my crystal ball and I have five predictions to share with you. First, I think many of the crypto firms will move offshores, perhaps to Europe, where regulators and banks seem to be friendlier to our industry. Some people have called out Signum Bank in Switzerland as a top option. Also, moving offshores definitely seems like the trend, given that even Coinbase and Gemini are both exploring an overseas exchange. Second, I think some crypto firms will try to build their own banks, like Kraken has been trying to do that for a while now, and even Brian Armstrong from Coinbase said it was an idea worth exploring. Unfortunately, with the banking sector so gate kept, this may be harder than they think. I mean, just look at Custodia Bank that did everything by the book, but still got rejected by the Federal Reserve. Third, I think giants from the traditional finance space will move in and take over big chunks of our industry. Just look at Fidelity and Nasdaq launching their own crypto products. Perhaps they'll build an SEN or Signet replacement that regulators will be more comfortable with. And perhaps that was the plan by Gary Gensler all along to let his Wall Street buddies win and take over. Fourth, I think all this unbanking stuff will ultimately make our industry more resilient because the companies that survive will take steps to prevent this from affecting them in the future. And fifth, I think this confirms that the lows are in because during this banking crisis in March, Bitcoin and crypto actually moved up instead of dropping down further. So that was strong confirmation to me that the market lows are in and that we won't see new lows barring another big black swan. Now, unfortunately, it looks like the federal government has made up its mind on hating crypto. That being said, there are things that we can do to make sure that this unbanking stuff doesn't get any worse. We can be loud, we can put pressure on our representatives to reel in the regulators, and we can support Ryan Selkis' plan of raising $100 million to do a crap ton of lobbying for the next election. It really looks like that's what it's gonna take to get a more crypto-friendly regime in and save our industry.